So I'm left again to ask of those who argue that we should stay. How many more generations of America's daughters and sons would you have me send to fight Afghanistan's civil war when Afghan troops will not? How many more lives, American lives, is it worth? How many endless rows of headstones at Arlington National Cemetery? I'm clear on my answer. I will not repeat the mistakes we've made in the past. Mistake of staying and fighting indefinitely in a conflict that is not in the national interest of the United States, of doubling down on a civil war in a foreign country, of attempting to remake a country through the endless military deployments of U.S. forces. All right, what's up, my people, man? So I want to get into this whole Afghanistan thing, this fallout we have behind uh, the collapse of the Afghan government and also the defeat of America inside of Afghanistan, which has been, a, it, from, from its history, it's been a country that is a landlocked country, it's a country that has been in conflict for thousands of years, it has been invaded by many powerful nations, empires, and every single one of them has faced defeat inside of this country. Now, looking into this whole debacle about the American withdrawal from the country and how quick this country's government and military fell to the Taliban, it poses the questions of who is at fault for this? Is there any administration, any one president? No, nah, absolutely not. This really falls right in the hands of the president over there. And the preparedness of the Afghan government to take over their country. And once again, and this may have to be pointed towards Bush, as he should have never went over into that goddamn country 20 years ago when he started two conflicts. And this is the problem inside of America, is that you can get one crappy-ass president who can create all type of conflict, destruction of economics inside of a country, uh, uh destabilization in other nations and in service term his maximum amount of time in the office and then his problems is someone else's problems to clean up and I think that needs to be something that needs to be shifted within the system there needs to be war crimes handed out to American presidents as well they shouldn't be immune to any of this type of shit because once again over in Afghanistan you have it looking like Vietnam as the American people and the American government, not the American people, let me take it back, the American government has failed the Afghan people as they fell all nations that they go in there to try to invade. Wasn't no humanitarian mission behind our presence inside of Afghanistan. And this country has failed the veterans who have served over there. I wonder what do US military members who serve multiple tours inside of Afghanistan who have been in units that have been bombed and have lost friends within their units or maybe casualties themselves to go over there to fight in this war and ultimately just see all of it go to waste as if what was the whole purpose of even being inside of that country? What was the whole purpose of it? Was it worth fighting for? Were the lives worth it? I mean, this is the, the, the whole debacle behind America's involvement in, in starting wars. Wars make zero sense. Wars have a zero sum to them. You don't gain anything. We ain't gain nothing from Iraq. Companies may. They don't benefit the uh, American people. And the mean people who serve in these wars are poor Americans, poor Americans who come from poor backgrounds, why everyone else benefits, all these corporations, defense contractors, and all this other stuff. Make huge tons of money behind America's engagement in nonsensical ass wars that creates destabilization in regions. America want to pick and choose who they want as leaders, and it never works out. It's about time America wake the F up and stay out of the people's shit. And this is the lesson learned. And I, that's one thing I always hated when I listen to, because I'm deeply political. Uh, I may run for a damn office or shit, work on a campaign, doing strategy for that shit or something. That's how deep I am with the political shit, is I hate listening to debates and 
or candidates are judged based on foreign policy. F foreign policy. I think it's one of the most, that's that colonial bullshit. Nobody gives a goddamn about international policies when America's in a goddamn shithole and has been in a shithole for it's probably since that damn war started and even probably before that. But ultimately, America couldn't stay over there in Afghanistan. What soldier or civilian kid, because you start off as regular civilian, 18-year-olds out of high school, wants to sign up for the military to ultimately be told he's going to go fight over in Afghanistan? Some 8,000 miles, some mod- miles away from home to go fight in this old dried-out, deserty, high-up-in-altitude, mountainous region of the world against people who are relentless as hell and will fight for other causes, other meanings behind where they're willing to lose their lives. But most American Americans who go to serve in the military ain't doing it for the pride of the country, ain't doing it to lose their lives for this mug, a, a, a country that doesn't give shit to their goddamn service members. And that's the whole thing. That's where the huge failure is, is the cost of or the efforts put in here by service people who go over for a mission of uh, 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 having to avoid death, causing death, destruction over in another country for their own survival because they've been sent on missions to go up over there, ultimately to watch it just blow up in smoke. But then it's also on the Afghan people because some president was going to have to make the mistake. We can't continuously move on through administrations because Trump started the ball on that anyway. Trump started to push on pulling troops up out of there. Um, he was taking some flack behind his, you know, the immediate withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan. Almost people were trying to accuse him of being the puppet of Putin. But ultimately, some president's going to have to make that damn decision. And it was up to this country, as you've seen that president who just fled their damn country, leaving them vulnerable as hell, they're going to have to stand up to fight these guys. And maybe the Taliban ain't as bad as everybody thinks. I mean, we're going to have to see. Uh, But that's all I got. Catch you guys on the next one. And what are your thoughts on that? Peace.